Hello and welcome to the two-man power trip of wrestling. I am your host, JP John Paz. With me today is a very special guest. He's a promoter, a wrestler, an actor, a stuntman. You may know him as Alter Boy Luke in a past life. He's, of course, the owner of Wildcat Wrestling. He is Mr. Luke Hawks. Welcome to the two-man power trip. How you doing, Luke? What's up? Good to see you. I'm good, Great man. To see I, you. I, How you been? A little crazy, a little crazy, but but we're, we're working it, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of things going on, both professionally, personally, all that stuff. So we got just trying to stay afloat, man. It's uh, trying to keep my head above water. We got so much going on right now. And, uh, you know, we, we had to obviously outside of work, you got like the pandemic and then we had Hurricane Ida down here and stuff. So we're still trying to uh, like recover from that. The, the community's not up and running yet. It, it, it's up, but it's not. Everybody's still behind. And then, of course, you know, if we want to talk politics and get into all the inflation with everything going through the fucking roof. And, uh, you know, it's just it's it, it's it's been it's been an interesting time for sure. You know, they, they're 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 making uh, they're definitely making things harder and more hoops to jump through before you do anything. So we're, we're just trying to do our best and keep things keep keep the ball moving. Keep moving forward. It's crazy out there. So what have you been up to lately? I see you everywhere, Dark Side of the Ring, doing movies. So what's been going on with you lately? Yeah, um, right now, uh, we're just, again, personally, I'm trying to recover some stuff from, from the hurricane. So trying to get our house in order and uh, get back on schedule with some things. And I, my schedule kind of got thrown in a blender for a bit. I had a, I had a job I was going to take overseas for a while, for a few months and uh end up falling through on that so i'm just trying to pick up the piece and it's nothing bad it's just like just trying to make things happen you know like uh, things are busy things are super busy and I, I couldn't leave the country for three months so uh it just it was just too long with everything else going on with the house and shit so uh just just trying to like film wise I just finished working on a Disney film called ultraviolet the television show that's coming out uh, for wrestling coordinating for that and playing a role in that. I got a new film dropping called Castle Falls with Dolph Lundgren and Scott Atkins and Scott Hunter. That drops December 3rd. So we're just a, a short, almost a month and a half away from that, a month and a couple weeks away from that. And uh, obviously Heels just finished. That was really big and that was really, yeah. really crucial for us. Really busy. A lot, of, a lot of really good positive feedback on that. So now we're just waiting on that official word for season two because everybody's chomping at the bits from that. So everybody's like, hey, what's up with season two? And we're going, hey, we're, we're waiting on stars to announce it, baby. We're waiting on them to say picking us up. So uh, one day at a time, though, I'm blessed, man. Some wrestling going on. I got Maryland Championship Wrestling coming up, some MCW, the Shamrock Cup. That's the second week of November. So really looking forward to that because MCW is one of those places that are near and dear to my heart. And I really, really have a a lot of respect. You know, when, when I was coming up through the ranks, the Shane Shamrock Cup was one of the biggest cups in pro wrestling and had a lot of, I mean, if you go back and look at all the guys who won it, these are, you know, were top guys in the business, guys who did a lot of stuff. And I was fortunate enough to win it in 2013. I was really happy about that. Um, really, really cool, really, really cool part of my career that I have a lot of respect for. But the thing about this year is, this is the first year that a father and son are in the tournament. So me and my son are both in the tournament, which is cool. And, you know, then gearing back up for some NWA stuff. So just trying to just trying to train and prep for that and work around my house. And I got a couple of films. I'm, I'm shooting a movie this this weekend. I picked up a role in this one little film we're shooting here this weekend. So and I got some other film stuff coming up in a few weeks. So just just it's busy, man. Just trying to find, a you know, trying to find that, that smooth path to juggle everything and you know, spend time with the family and kind of see some friends because I know soon I'll probably be leaving again for a good eight to 10 months, maybe a year. Who knows how long it is? So, so I, I'm just trying to lock everything down and get as much done before I leave. So that's it, man. Just breathing, bro. Breathing and moving. <laughs> Jeez. Dolph Lundgren, heels, uh, NWA, all the, geez. All yeah, these other movies, yeah. you're busy as hell. My God. Even busier I, than I, I, I thought. I, Dark Side of the Ring, I, I, I throw that in there. Yeah, I'm fortunate to be very busy, man. I'm very lucky, and my son's in that same boat. He's pretty much doing majority of the stuff I'm doing. And actually, he's doing a little bit more than me because he's got some other films that I'm not doing that he's on. Like, uh, he was working on a film today. He's got another one coming up next week. So, like, he's he's staying really busy with the films and stuff, too. He's a super talented kid, man, super talented. I couldn't ask for a better kid. So just 
really just trying, like, again, just, just trying to find that balance. You know, it's, it's always, I'm, I'm lucky this week's, this week's a little bit slower. Um, except towards, I, th- I think I told you when we talked just towards the end of the week, it, it picks up a little bit for me, but, uh, I, I got a little free time this week. So we'll just court and chill out a little bit. And by free time, I mean, like, I can actually be home for the day. I still got 500 things to do, but I can be home and, you know, go walk the dog and do the stuff I need to do. <laughs> yep. Man, how did you get into, I'm just curious, like the acting part, like the stunt man and, and do you're like, I don't know. It's so crazy because it seems like wrestling and acting would go together very easily and, and the stunt work, but how'd you get in? Like, how did you get into that? Well, world? yeah. It, so Vampiro originally got me in. And so I got to give credit to Vampiro. He gave me my first opportunity. Um, me and Vamp, you know, if we go back into like the XPW days, I'm trying to finagle this camera with the lighting so I can block that light up behind me. That's, that, that's better. Um, Perfect. So yeah, Vamp was in the WSX days. Um, I came on XPW and I had a man. I had a chip on my shoulder. So and I and I always have a chip on my shoulder. You know, I, I'm that that kid that grew up in the streets, man. I just I'm from the streets. I grew up in a boy's home, and, and you know, I grew up fighting. And I didn't have that conventional life, so everything was fight from the bottom and take no shit and move forward. So I remember back in the days being in XPW, and you know, a lot of guys would kind of treat you like a, you know, I was a young guy. So they, they treated you like a young guy. They didn't have the time. You know, there was a lot of cool guys, but there was also a lot of guys who wouldn't even shake your hand or wouldn't acknowledge you. So anybody that treated me like shit coming up, I, I you know, at first you kind of shut your mouth because it's wrestling and you got to pay your dues and you just respect the veterans. But after a while it gets old. So um, I started if, it, if I had something, if I had anything to say with anybody or if anybody I felt did me wrong in the past, I, I went after him. And Vamp was one of those guys. And when, when we were at WSX, uh, he, he, you know, we, we never had much words at, at XBW the time he was in or other locker rooms I shared with him. So he was a locker room leader and I just, he was having some conversations and he told me something one day, nothing negative. He just told me something one day and I said, hey, you know, if you got something to say to me, keep it to yourself because I don't want to hear a fucking thing you say, basically. And, and kind of went off on him. And then he's like, oh, what's what's the problem? You know, I, I don't know you. I said, well, that's a problem. You don't know me. I've been sharing locker rooms with you for years now and you don't fucking know me. So, uh, you know, and <clears throat> went into it and he says, oh, well, let's fix this. And so so, so hats off the vamp because we, 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 we fixed that back and we talked and we, we squashed it. We squashed it quick, too. And uh, he had a he had a lot of respect for me. And he was shooting his film in Mexico, and he told me about it. He said, look, you know, there's a part for you. And so I like to come down and play this part. So I, I, I took it with a grain of salt. I thought, he, I thought it wasn't going to be nothing. I thought it was just, you know, he's just telling me that to try and get on my good side. But Lord and behold, about three months later, they called me, flew me down to Mexico, and everything was great. And we shot this film, Dead Sleep Easy. And I really wasn't happy with my outcome on it because I thought that I knew more than I did because I thought that since I could wrestle and I could entertain and I can, you know, cut a promo in front of crowd that that I could transition over to movies and film fighting and all that stuff. And I couldn't have been more wrong. It was, it was you know, I wasn't happy with my performance on the show. They did a good job editing and everything together. But when I seen the rough cuts, I was like, eh, that doesn't look good. This doesn't look good. And, you know, the wrestling side didn't really transition into the, the film side of things. So I needed to go back to the drawing board and I needed to figure out how I can improve and make myself better, which meant going to classes and studying and learning. So I, I you know, long story short, I started training for about two years with a guy named Phil Odell, who was a stunt coordinator. And he took me in and, and we had a team of guys, me, John Berniker, Tony Bo, and a few other cats. And we'd go up there and we'd just train our asses off, man, train and train and train and train. And, you know, the same thing, take some acting classes and do that stuff. So I, it was just, it was just, I was working towards that goal. It, it took me two years to, um, two years, three years, three years before I got my next film. So I did two solid years of training, probably two and a half years before I got my next film after that. And it was actually wrong side of town with Batista and Rob Van Dam. It's Rob Van Dam's film. Oh, yeah. I got sagged on that, and I had a little fight with Rob. And you know, Rob's my boy. We've always been cool. Dave's my boy. We've always been cool. Uh, but that was cool, and that was like their first like big films. So we we you know and we got to shoot that together. 
And I got to work a good bit on that, do some stunts on that. And, you know, one thing just led to another. I started transitioning more into more films and learning more things and taking more courses. And so it's 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 kind of a pain in the ass because people, excuse me, people see how successful I am now and how well I'm doing with it and how much, you know, I'm getting. And I, I'm 24 7 wrestlers are, you know, messaging me or, or talking to when they see me, hey, man, I want to get in some films. Hook me up, hook me up, hook me up. And I'm like, yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not hook you up. That's not how it works. It's, uh, you know, I went to school for it and I trained for it. And, you know, my, my buddy didn't just pull me in and go, hey, you're my buddy. Let me give you a job and we're going to make you the next big thing. It's like, you got to put the fucking work in. Right. right. And I think that's a, it, it's a little frustrating. Now, I, I understand it. I understand it. But, but at the same time, like, dude, if you want something, get out there and get after it. Don't, don't, don't hit me up and say, Hey, hook me up. Don't hit me up and say, Hey, how can I get, you know, hit, say, Hey, what do I need to do to follow those footsteps and to get into the business? You know, right. you're not going to go to med school and go, Hey, hey. I mean, you're not going to skip med school and go to some doctor and say, Hey, Hey, hook me up. I want to be a doctor. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, it doesn't work that way. Right. You train, you go to school, you learn, you learn the craft and then, you know, you, you come up in the craft, you start low, and hopefully you work your way up the ladder. It's rarely that somebody starts high and gets that first big opportunity and stays up there. You know, it, it just doesn't really happen that way usually. So uh, if I was going to give some advice to aspire um, stuntmen, wrestlers, actors, is put the work in. You know, actually train. Don't, 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 don't you know, don't message somebody on Facebook and ask them to hook you up. <laughs> Yeah, it would probably be wise if they went to you know some acting school and did some stunt work uh, and did some yeah, stuff yeah. on their own yeah. and make themselves better. Yeah, and I, I probably sound egotistical saying that, man. But it get, dude, if I showed you the stuff I get from people, it's just like it's people you don't know, and they're like, "Oh, hey, what's up, man? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to get in these films. What's up? You gonna hook me up?" You're like, did you really just fucking send me a message? That, like, not even introducing yourself, not even introducing yourself. Are you really just sending me a Facebook messenger? message and saying hook you up it's it's crazy bro it's crazy i'm going jesus christ they got balls man that's that's balls. yeah right i i mean hey what do you got what's the worst that can happen you can get ignored to say no i guess you know but they're probably thinking maybe it will work and say yeah but it's funny <laughs> like they see your success and they're trying to you know piggyback because they see yeah. you fast and furious and and heels and all this other stuff yeah, it's crazy, bro. And I've been fortunate, but again, I'm working my ass off. And dude, I'm not sleeping. I'm hustling. I'm out grinding. I'm out training. I'm out, you know, networking and doing everything I got to do. Like I'm, I'm having all these meetings, and I'm just, I'm just doing, you know. And at the same time, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do the best for my community and my guys, and put those guys who I know are working hard. Like, like if, when I need something, I go to the guys I know who can hit a home run with it. I'm going to give guys opportunities who, who, who are working hard. You know, my goal is to like, it's not just for me, you know, my, 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 my goal is to bring my team up and bring everybody around. And you don't even have to be my team. If I know you're a hard worker and you're somebody I want on my team because you're a hard worker, guess what? You're getting a job, you know, and that's just how it is, bro. We want, we, I want workers. I want guys who aren't scared to put the work in, aren't scared to do the research, aren't scared to put, you know, to just grind and grind and grind, you know, not, not guys who just want to go play video games and, you know, smoke some weed and hang out with their girlfriend and do whatever. And then try, you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, yeah. that, that, ain't, that ain't how it works, bro. That ain't how it works. You were also, I mean, you were in a bunch of big stuff, right? I mean, Logan too. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fast I mean, Furious, I, a bunch I, of big time movies. I can't count. You know, I've been lucky. You know, I, I've never, you know, and then I, I also get that slack where, where people are like, oh, yeah, it's, oh, well, you're only in that for 30 seconds. Oh, you're only in that for a minute. You know, you only said a couple of things. Like, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, whatever, man. So I, I've been fortunate to have a good career. It's still rolling. We're doing pretty well. I'm, I'm probably the hottest I've ever been right now. And I think I think it's just going to grow and expand from there because I've got a lot of things on the horizons, um, a lot of – a lot of things we're working on now, a lot of stuff that's not even out yet that, 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 that we shot previously that are coming out. So, you know, I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm excited. And, and the, the best part about it is to be able to work with my team, be able to work with my son and work with my Wildcat guys and bring those guys along. The guys who are just really, really grinding and grinding and grinding. We're grind. We're in the trenches together. You know, these, these, these are people that have pretty much been there since day one for me or since I started Wildcat. And we're just moving along together. We're just putting the work in, putting the work in, putting the work in, and here we are all coming up, which is cool. 
Yeah, that's all. Awesome. You can't, you can't, you can't have moochers, bro. You can't have moochers. You got to no. have workers. Did you ever think, like, when you were getting into wrestling, like, like oh, I'm going to get into acting and, and stunt work too, or that, like, the Vampiro thing, it just kind of happened? Like, did you ever foresee yourself getting into that world? Well, I, you know, everybody dreams about it. Everybody. No, I don't think mm-hmm. there's, you know, most people look at this stuff and go, man, I would love to be in a movie or I'd love to do this. And, and of course, I always did too, but I didn't know anything about the business. And, you know, I'm in Louisiana. I didn't, I didn't live in Hollywood, so I didn't think that, that you know, there was a chance for me to be in films. And what happened was um, I was hanging out with Danny Trejo one day. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with him. Oh, yeah. and, you know, Dust of Dawn and all that stuff. So uh, I was with Danny. I already did my fire. I did Dead Sleep Easy. And we were in Hollywood, me, Danny, and a mutual friend. And we just all spent the day together doing some stuff and hanging out. And he was kind of giving me pointers. He's like, man, all the work's by you. Everything's in Louisiana back, back then. You know, it's not now. It's in Georgia now. But he's like, all oh, the work's by you, man. He's like, you should be working. and You should be doing this. So I'm just picking his brain and, getting, you know, and that's why I learned why I needed to go to stunt school. And that's, he was like, you should go to a stunt school. And because I didn't know there were stunt schools. Right. I didn't know. I didn't know any of this stuff. Um, so so there's been guys, you know, guys like Kevin Matthews, who hits me up regularly. And he's worked in a few films and done some stuff. And, you know, he asked my advice and he went to us on school and he did some work. And so it, it's just, you got to learn these processes. I didn't, again, I didn't know that, right. I didn't know there was schools. I didn't know about acting classes. I didn't, you know, cause I didn't grow up in, 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 in that side of the world. You know, I didn't grow up, you know, taking, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? I'm, I, I'm having a brain fart, but like at school, I didn't, I didn't take, uh, like what's acting it, classes or acting screenwriting class. classes or whatever. Not screenwriting classes, but where you where you do the plays and I don't. What is? Oh, all well, that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, that guy. I, whatever I it like is. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's a there's a there's a a, a term for the class. I just uh, can't think of it at the moment. Me neither. So, I don't know why, but yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, like the the kids that are in plays and stuff in, in school. Right, right, right. So I didn't I didn't have any of that experience. So um, it's a theater class, I guess you call it. Theater, theater. there's theater, but there's there's yeah. another. Oh, God, you know that you know that class. What I'm talking about at school, like drama. Yeah, there you go, drama. Oh, <laughs> duh. <laughs> duh. <laughs> hey, so simple. I, I go. I got. I got my go-to over here. So she yeah, she holds nice. me down. <laughs> nice. It's funny uh, because like a lot of people, I'm sure, like didn't realize it. Like Terry Funk, when he got in, I'm sure when he started first acting, I'm sure he wasn't like, I'm going to go to a uh, acting school. You know, I'm sure he didn't yeah. realize it at first. No, and that was was cool. Like I really tried to. Uh, he was somebody. I, so, bro, I, I'm again. I had that hard knocks life, so I never had health insurance. I didn't have a you know, I didn't have a privileged life at all, bro. It was it was it was it was, it was, it was finding ways to eat for me. You know, it was always a struggle. So I remember listening to it. It's funny you brought that up because I've never talked about this with anybody. Uh, I remember listening to an interview or reading it. I don't know if I listened or read, but but or read. But I remember having Terry Funk say that he would only work like half a year wrestling, and he would spend like half, or he would take a couple months off and go film. And the reason he would do that is because so he can have health insurance through SAG. Yes. And, yes. And, and I was like, man, I need health insurance and I got kids and I got this and I got that, you know, and so I had to do and wrestling wasn't going to provide that. and wrestling wasn't going to pay that money. But I loved wrestling. And I, I wanted to wrestle and I wanted to make my money wrestling and continue my lifestyle wrestling. So I had to juggle both of them. I actually made a lot of stupid mistakes with wrestling uh, in film because like, I had some big offers to make a lot of money in film and I would turn them down because I had some $300 wrestling booking that I didn't want to cancel, you know, and I'm going, I could go make 20 grand in like a week, or I can go take this $300 booking that I've been committed to for two months and they already booked the flight and everything. And I would just take the booking that I already had the flight for so I wouldn't screw the promoter over. I mean, cause I love wrestling at the same time, but that's, it, it's not the, it wasn't the smartest business decision, you know? Right. But it's that's 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 my passion like, for wrestling, bro. And funny, Funk is like so smart. You know, people always say, "Oh, he's crazy," but he's so smart. He's like, "Man, I need that SAG insurance, so I'm just going to do some acting." You know, for a few months out of the year. Very smart guy. Crazy yep. like a fox. Crazy like a fox. 
always a fun. Is he the first guy to really do that? Because he's the first wrestler I know that I've ever heard of, like saying SAG card, SAG card well, insurance. Yeah, you know, I think he was the, the the more noticeable one. Captain Lou Albano did a lot of stuff back in the day. Yes, yep. You know, obviously he was Mario and Mario Brothers, and he was in the Cindy Lauper videos. And you know, if you look at some of the older stuff, he did several different projects. So I think guys popped up here and there. And I remember seeing special appearances by wrestlers, excuse me, on television shows like King Kong Bundy was on Married with Children. Yeah. Uh, so, so Andre see, was on like uh, Six Million Dollar Man or whatever it was. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. And Andre was in a bunch of stuff. So, but I mean, Andre was unique, right? Because he was Andre. So, like, if he popped up, that, that Six Million Dollar Man episode was, was you know, I, I don't even, I remember what it was, but like this monster, but I don't think that yeah. was like a really big moment for him because he just wasn't noticeable as Andre the Giant, where like in Princess Bride, you know, he was Andre the Giant. It was later on in his career, but God, God, how, how huge was that movie for him, right? That was a big movie to begin with. So the fact that Andre the Giant was in it, I mean, look, look at all the actors. Look how big The Rock is. Nobody expected The Rock to be the biggest star in the world. You know, and he's a wrestler. Right. You know, yep. it, it used to be you had that stigma of you're a pro wrestler. Nobody wanted to touch you, right? And then now yep. it's kind of, it, it's different. It's like, oh, this guy's a pro wrestler. This guy's a superhero. Let's roll. <laughs> Yeah, or uh, Batista. I was just watching Dune the other night. Man, movie's Batista's, awesome. He's a great villain. He's he awesome. is a he's a really good actor. He is an extremely yeah. good actor. Yeah, Dave is, is is a really man. He does some really good stuff. Even in Bond, when he wasn't even talking, just his mannerisms and the way he was moving and stuff. He's awesome in Bond. Obviously, Drax. He's great in Blade Runner. He's in a ton of good movies. Right, right. The guy's killing it. And I mean, and there you go. It's like he took, he went broke. He was he was struggling, like he stepped away from wrestling and he really put all his eggs into into acting, and you know he was at that point. You can go back and read some of his interviews or listen to some of his interviews, and you'll read how far along, like how much he dropped because he's like, nah, I'm not gonna go. I could go back to wrestling and make some money, but I really want to stick to this acting stuff, and I'm waiting for that that offer. And you know, Drax was the thing that that got him. Drax was that thing that that. Uh, look at Stuber, man. Stuber was a great movie too. Like, yeah, another good one. Yeah, he's a yeah, bunch hat, of good ones. Yeah, he yeah, might be like the off. best actor, actor like wrestling. You know I, what I mean? Like the guy I, that can yeah, really I act. think he is. I think he is. I think he's the most uh, versatile. And I was talking yeah. about that with Steve Punk the other day. Me and Punk were talking about that. I do think. Uh, well, well, Punker obviously is getting into stuff too. But Batista, as far as like the acting. He, like he kind of you for, almost forget like rock you're always like all right that's rock you know he's playing the role or even like yeah. hogan back in the day it's like okay you know that's hogan playing the role but tc you yeah. almost get lost in it sometimes you're like oh shit well, that's right and, and exactly that's the thing and that's what you want right you know uh it's not like 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 rock he's good he's that action hero right he's that big star that we were missing for so long because you you know you didn't have that stallone schwarzenegger yeah he's arnold of, yeah yeah, yeah, John Claude Van Damme. Like, so now this guy's this, he's that guy, but Batista's that guy. It's like doing a little bit of everything, right? He's putting, like, he, he's very versatile again in what he does, which I can really appreciate. And that's what I want to do. So I'm, I'm looking for more roles that can make, you know, make me better, challenge me a little bit. I, I don't want to just be the, the, the rough guy, the rough neck, the, you know, the, the, the bouncer, this guy, the badass. Like, I want to do some things that, um, kind of helped me advance my career in, in, in other ways, like some comedies and stuff. I'm a, I'm a big comedy guy. So everything I do is comedy related. Like if you know me personally, uh, like comedy is my life. So I love a lot. I love a lot of good stand up. I watch a lot of comedy. Uh, I want, you know, like I love Curb Your Enthusiasm. That's what we watch now. We, 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 you know, we're stuck on that and I'm a big fan of that big fan of the office. So those are the kind of things like I, I'd like to be involved in some kind of projects similar to that because it just that's what I like to do. You know, it's a, it's a different side of things for me. And, and, and I, I consider myself a funny guy, even though I don't show up much on social media or, or you know, like with, if you know me, you know, like I, I'm just I'm on it usually one line is one line one liners. So it's just a, it's how my mind thinks. So, yeah, I, I like to step out and do a lot more comedy. Did you happen to see Curb is back? Did you did you catch? Oh uh, yeah, I, so so I haven't uh I haven't finished season ten yet. I'm very late oh. to the Curb train. I never so it's weird. Maybe about a year ago, I've heard of it, 
right? I heard of it, and I but I thought it was a game show because I don't watch a lot of TV. I, 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 you know, I don't have cable or any of that stuff, so I don't, I don't watch a lot of TV. I, I just don't have time to. So uh, when I would watch stuff, it usually be like The Office or watch refunds. So it's just stuff that kind of puts me at peace and calms me down. And, you know, when I'm cut and I need to unwind and I want to laugh a little bit. So uh, a friend of mine from the gym, my buddy Chris, was like, "Dude, you got to He's like, he started sending me some curb memes, and I was like, "What is this?" He's like, "Oh, you never watched it?" He's like, "Dude, it's hilarious." So he said, you got to check it out. It might take you a little bit to get into, but, you know, check it out. So me and my girl, I made her watch it. And uh, we started <laughs> we started watching. And I fell in love with it. And then, you know, it took her a little while. But then eventually she started to like it, too. She really liked it when uh, Leon Black came in. Yes. Because the, the black the blacks were hilarious. You know, I, I like I'm – a, I'm a Marty Funk College fan. I, I, I love, I love, uh, I love uh, Super Dave Osborne. So, yes. it's, it's, you know, Bob Einstein's a, a freaking gr- great – comedian very dry i I like that stuff so yeah i'm I'm all in it man so yeah we're uh we're like we just started season 10 so then we'll get over to the new season right after nice good stuff were you a seinfeld fan back in the day no no never uh but to be honest i've never really watched it so i might have to go back and and get into it you know because i i usually like crude comedy you know i'm a i'm a sam kennison andrew dice clay patrice o'neill Uh, Bill Dawes is a hilarious comedian. If you ever heard of Bill Dawes, he's really funny. D A W E S. Uh, so so like you know, in Patrice O'Neill's uh, Elephant in a Room stand up is, God, I think that's one of the greatest comedies ever done. It's really really funny from beginning to end. Patrice O'Neill's just great. He's a genius. And so, yeah, uh, I think I might have to check out some Seinfeld and see if I can get into it or not. But we'll, we'll, Come on, we'll Larry, out. Larry co-created it. Larry Co- co- and he, co-created, he is. Yeah. And he is George Costanza. The, the, the he, character is based on. Yeah. That. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing is, is, is my girl's got the next TV show. So when we finish Curb, she's been telling me, we always watch your show. She's always looking at me. She's like, she's oh, like, yeah. She, she keeps telling me, next show is mine. So we'll see what she picks. I'll probably be watching like Sex in the City or some shit. You know? <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> Hopefully something better than that. Yeah. You know, oh, my God. Phasing off here. Yeah. <laughs> So if I could, let's get into some wrestling here. You got the, yeah, uh, the Canyon yeah, we'll shirt on. You know, you got the Canyon shirt on, which is awesome. Very yeah, good episode that? of uh, Dark Side of the Ring. I, I think it's one of the most viewed this season anyway, the most viewed that they've had. They've had a little bit of a downswing, but you were on the XPW show yeah. episode, and then you were obviously on the Canyon episode. What Correct. do you think about, like, just in general, Dark Side of the Ring, Canyon? Do you think, like, I don't know, maybe, I know it's Dark Side of the Ring, so it's going to focus on the dark side, but do you think that almost they focus too much on the dark and, and should kind of promote more of, like, the, I don't know, how awesome he was and how great of a worker he was, stuff like that? You know, I think we know that he's a great worker, right? And I, I would right. love to see something else done on him, maybe maybe a documentary or something, because I think he deserves it. And, and, you know, that's not a lot of time to tell your story in that short amount of time. And, and the point was to talk about his struggle in his life. And and he, you know, the only thing I didn't really like about Dark Side of the Ring episode with Canyon, and, and I get it. Look, the, the Young Bucks are bigger stars than me in, in wrestling. So they put them on a lot more than I was. And they didn't know Chris half as good as I knew him. I actually introduced the Young Bucks to, to Chris. So, you know, there's a lot of stories I can go back with Chris and, and talk about and the things in his life and the things he was going through. Like I, I was I was there, I was living with him. So I was there firsthand. So I think there's so much more to talk about with Chris. And I would like to see him praise for his work and the things that he did in the wrestling community and like the guys he, you know, gave opportunities to. I mean, that cruiserweight division in WCW was was a lot had to do with Chris. You know, he was the guy who's hiring Shane Helms and Shannon Moore and AJ Styles and all those guys that got jobs was was because of Chris Canyon. Chris Canyon scouted all those guys. That was his job. He brought them to WCW. So there's a lot of guys who really owe Chris. You know, I, I don't think he gets what what's due. I don't think enough people say, "Hey, yeah, thank you." And that's that's common. It's not just with Chris. It's with everybody. You know, people get an opportunity and they they blow up and they kind of forget. Uh, maybe they don't forget. Maybe it's just not, not that big of a deal to them because they figure they would have got those opportunities elsewhere anyways. But I wish I would see more guys praise him publicly 
for for the things he's did for people because he was just such a good guy. He was such a hard worker. He was such a good friend. He was just, you know, it, just an awesome human being. And, and, you know, like I said in there, when you see me crying on TV, it's, it's, I miss him dearly. I miss him dearly. I feel like, too, they missed a few guys. Like, how come Raven wasn't interviewed? You know what I mean? Like, there's a couple guys that they missed. Well, well, everybody says that, right? They go, oh, why right. didn't he interview? I, I, I listened to dummy Rob Black uh, talking uh, <laughs> about about XPW. <laughs> why didn't they interview this guy? Why didn't they interview that guy? Why? They don't want to be interviewed. They got nothing good to say. And they know, right. you Rob know didn't I mean? want to be interviewed or, either. Yeah. Right. And, and, or they're done with that part of their life. You know what I mean? So, like, maybe Raven didn't want to be interviewed. I, I, you know, I'll, I'll ask Scotty. I know Scotty, so I'll reach out and ask him. But yeah, you know, Chris, Chris and Raven were really tight. They, you know, they talked often. There was a few guys that Chris talked to often. I was one of the guys he talked to often. Uh, Raven was one of the guys he talked to often. Shane Helms was one of the guys he talked to often. Uh, our friend Jackie Double J Johnson, who passed away, was, was a guy he talked to very often. You know, so there was people that that were heavily involved in his life, and then and there was more people that could have been interviewed. I'm sure, but again. You know, yeah, you know, you got the young bucks, and I'm not dissing the young bucks. It's just like you know, they they, they looked up to him, and Chris meant a lot to the young bucks. But there's other people that knew Chris a lot better than the young bucks did. But but of course, because the young bucks are, you know, the the hierarchy of wrestling, they're gonna put them in there for the views, and that's makes understandable, sense. right? That's understandable. Yeah, it makes sense to to a point, sure. But yeah, I feel like sometimes, you know, I, obviously on those shows you always look back like, oh, they missed this, they missed that, or you, know, you had more of a relationship with them than some other people. They could have got some stories of you guys living together, and you know what I mean, right? Like, and so we, like, and we did. We, like? we, we talked about that. They just, you know, they choose to put in Cut what it. they put in. Yeah. So which which is fine, you know. That's that's what happens. That's what TV does. So uh, unless you have executive producer rights where you have creative control and you're going to be able to say, you know, I want this in there, I want that in there, it's going to happen. Uh, and and you know, honestly, bro, big shout out to the Young Bucks though because God damn, like they they did some magical stuff from just being independent guys, right, with the Japan stuff yeah. and getting the T-shirts and Hot Topic and you know they they did all that. You know, I, I just always had a lot of respect for those guys for that being able to pull those things off that they did it because it, it was unheard of, right? The things they did were unheard of. So again, self-made, you know, self-made talented guys. So again, like I consider myself self-made. A lot of people say, you know, Joe Gardner was the first person who named me that. He said the self-made man, Luke Hawks. And I and I that's that's a, a phrase that's dear to my heart because I just, I hustled to get everything I got. You know, nobody was putting me on a pedestal. Nobody was giving, I, I was making opportunities for myself. So, uh, you know, somebody had to give me opportunities, but at the same time, I was out there earning those opportunities and, and nobody was like, hey, this is golden boy. Let's push him. Let's push him. Let's give him this. It was like, oh, Luke's a hard worker. Luke's working. Let's work. And then I would just do a good job and, you know, it would lead to another opportunity, another opportunity, another opportunity. Same things with film. What was it like living with Canyon though? I mean, that's got to be crazy, right? He was a little schizophrenic, yeah. I'm, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we talked about it in Dark Siders. I said, you know, at one point we had to hold him down and kind of tie him up because, he, you know, he was talking about leaving and he was just going through these crazy modes and talking nuts about driving on it. Like he was saying, I remember one night we were at the house. He was home the whole time. He's home the whole time. And he's saying that he just got back and he was driving on this bridge that that wouldn't end. And he's seen aliens and aliens are in this Scientology building right around the corner. And he's got to go break in and blah, blah, blah. And we were like, we can't let this dude leave the house. You know, it would be weird because he would just stay up. No drugs. People are like, oh, bro, that's drugs. That's drugs. I'm around the dude 24-7. He was clean as a whistle. He didn't drink. He would just go. He would stay up for three or four days at a time straight. And then he'd go crash for like 24 hours, but like he'd have these upswings, but he'd be up, 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 up and crash. And it seemed like he's on drugs, but he really, there was no drugs involved whatsoever. He was just, you know, manic and going through these modes and, and you just didn't know. Like he'd be fine one minute and then a couple hours later, he'd just start like freaking out. So, but, it, but he wasn't like that 24 seven, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was a roller coaster. You never knew what you were going to get. Yeah, it's kind of scary. I guess but it was he wasn't fun. getting it was medicated, fun. I guess. We, we, we had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun living with him, too. Now, he was a great guy. You know, we had so much fun. Like, I, I initially said, I taught Chris into getting a Facebook. So, like, Chris didn't have Facebook. Like, I'm like, oh, you got to get a Facebook. Uh, so, I talked him into getting a Facebook. He, he, he kind of, he, he loved UFC. 
So, and I wasn't really a big fan of it then. It was it wasn't as popular as it is now. But he was like the one, oh, we gotta watch the UFC, we gotta watch this, and we watch football, and we watch different stuff and sport. Love sports, you know, follow sports down to a T. Love, love baseball. Um, the Mets were his team, I believe, and just this like it was cool because it was just some bros living together, bros living together, having a good time, watching wrestling, watching UFC, watching football, watching baseball. You know, going out on the beach and hanging out, and we'd go out and you know just hang dude or go to shows together it was it was a really good time in life it, it, it wasn't it, it, it had its ups and downs again like we had our battles but god it, it was a really pivotal part in my life because i would learn so much from him um and he was just such a good person i would see the people he would take care of and just you know i really enjoyed being around him because he would just help make me a better person but he always wanted to see people run and do good he just wanted to see people run and do good and he he would never ask for anything out of it he just wanted to see people do good and he had such a great mind for the business everyone i talk oh, yeah. to that that's a wrestler always says like oh my god the guy you know put together a match or you know he could train the guys he could do so many different things with wrestling it was just like he had a a genius level intellect for wrestling very very good very, very good. Loved wrestling. Very innovative, as we know. You know, he was super innovative. He always came up with stuff. People always stole his stuff. Um, but also always very self-conscious as well. You know, I think a lot of us are, right? A lot of us, especially when you're so good. I mean, look at all the greats. They pick everything apart that they do, right? They're never really satisfied with what they do, and they always figure out how they could have done it better. And that was Chris. You know, Chris always wanted to do things better and he'd always go, oh, that sucked. I want to do this better. Or, you know, like he was just a workhorse. It's crazy. Like Flair went through a depression at one point. You're like, wow, you're Ric Flair, the greatest of all time. And you're like, you thought you stunk? You know, it's like a weird thing. And then even <laughs> Flair comes up and he kind of questions Canyon and he even kind of connects those two. It's like, wow, what? you know, defending WWE, but kind of well, saying that yeah, about Canyon. That, that's crazy. that was bullshit. Yeah. And that was bullshit. And uh, Canyon, you know, Canyon took that to heart, but Canyon was really pissed off about at Flair for that. But but Flair, look, Cena too, they were being company guys, right? They yeah, had, yep, Cena definitely. was wrong. Cena was wrong. Everything Cena said in that Hobbs Run interview was wrong. Yep. Canyon was a phenomenal talent, but what 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 do you expect him to say when he's that guy, especially that young coming up in the company and they're putting a, you know, they're giving him the ball. He has to defend that company. And their actions. He can't go, oh, yeah, well, WWE is wrong. They need to give this guy's job. They need to do this, or this guy could do so much more, but the company held him down. Nobody's going to say that. It's, it's like politics right now. You know, you know, all these jackasses wanted the guy who's in office now because they hated the guy who was in office before so much. And nobody's going, oh, my God, we're drowning now. You see people getting online saying, you know, how, how you know, it, it's, it's, look, I don't care what side you're on. But do you see people complaining how they were complaining two years ago when everything's 10 times worse now? No, they're not. Everybody just shuts the hell up about it. Everybody's just like, oh, this is fine. The world's burning around us. This is fine. We're not going to say anything. Oh, it's a, it's a disaster out there, to say yeah. the least. <laughs> Same oh, scenario. Same yeah. scenario. Yeah. Way worse now. Way, way, yeah, way, 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 worse. Way, yeah. way, way worse now. Yeah, I agree. Way worse now. But it's just, yeah. isn't it funny how nobody's saying anything? Nobody's yep. vocal. Nobody's all stressed out. And people are losing their homes and shit and, you know, can't afford gas and can't afford food. But nobody's nobody's saying hey, how bad they have it right now. Nobody's going, oh, my God, somebody needs to do something. You know, nobody's going to get this guy out of office. Nobody, you know, it's crazy, bro. It's a, it's, a, it's a fucking retarded world. And I'm sorry to use that word. It's a stupid fucking world we live in. I can't stand it, dude. It's, it's a, like we should all be in this together. We should all be fighting for each other. We should all be trying to help each other get better. And, and nobody's doing a thing about it. You know, I, I I don't know. I don't understand it, man. It's all bullshit. It's, it, it's, it's, well, it's media. It's media. It's media. Media wants to divide everybody. Seems like it. Big time. Unfortunately. Yeah. So I was mentioning, or you kind of mentioned Rob Black before. I wanted to mention that as well. What did you think about the XPW episode? Obviously, Alter Boy Luke, you kind of got your start there, right? Really kind of threw Vic Grimes in, in a way. You really kind of got your start in XPW. Yeah, I did. Um, so, so you know, I thought they did a good job with the, with the episode. Timeline was off a little bit. But, again, you got, you got a short amount of time, right? Uh, and I understand why people who weren't involved in the video didn't want to be involved in the video. A lot of those people, like Vic, I've talked to Vic about it several times previously. He's a preacher now. 
he doesn't want anything to do with that side of his life. He doesn't want any of that, you know, like, he's just like, look, I'm done with that. Like, like, let them say whatever they want. You know, we know the truth. He knows the truth. And does he want the truth to get out about some of the things that happened and stuff between him and New Jack and all? Does he want to say his side and say what really happened, say the truth? Yeah, of course he does. But he's like, it's just not worth it. People are going to believe what they want to believe. Uh, it's not going to, it's not going to do any good. It's going to feel better for me to get it off my chest. But in the end of the day, people are going to believe who they want to believe. They're going to believe what they want, you know, and, and whoever's going to swing it whichever way they want. So they're not going to, he's like, it's just better for me to just shut up. So I'll just sit back and, you know, so it, and, and it's, it's a lot of the guys are like that. Like it does no, it does no good for them to, uh, it does no good for them to, 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 come on there because they have no benefits from it. You know, it's just them saying they, they were a part of a company that people know that they were a part of a company of, you know, and, and they could tell stories and they could, and maybe they won't, you know, some of the guys still talk to Rob. Some of the guys still talk to other people or some of the guys don't talk to Rob or don't like Rob. And, you know, like they just, they just rather not be a part of it. You know, I didn't mind being a part of it because I had things I wanted to say. And, you know, I, when they called me about it, I was interested in doing it because, I think there's a lot of things about XPW that people don't know. And, you know, am I thankful for XPW? I said, yeah, I was thankful for it because it was a, it gave me a good start in my career early on. It was a big opportunity for me. But do I think that the company was ran properly? Hell no, it wasn't ran properly. I, I don't think that, that Rob had any idea what he's doing. I think he's, you know, I don't think the guy should be running a wrestling show. And uh, to be honest, I, I'm not even on here to debate about him or anything if I had, you know, there's a lot of things I would say to him, but I, I'm not going to sit here and say it on a podcast. And no offense to you guys, I would say it to his face. You know, like I, I like if I got something, I got, I got things I would say to him, but I want to say it to his face. And I want to say it that way. If he's got something to say back, we can go toe to toe right there. You know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not the kind of guy who would say one thing and then like give some guy some free publicity. You know, for 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 you know, I mean, like it's just that's all it is. Like nobody's talking about that guy. They're talking a little bit right now because of the XPW episode, but. Yeah. It's funny. Uh, my buddy used to get all the XPW DVDs and we watch it. I remember you got like crucified basically and nailed. It's like, man, he's nuts. It's like taking that shot. Yeah. I had no idea that you didn't want to take that shot. I thought you no. were just crazy. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing is I wasn't told I was taking that shot. Wow. I was told okay. I was taking one shot. Like the, the Dreamer Raven thing where, yeah. where he's, you know, Kelf to the cage and one chair shot, chair shot heard around the world. Same exact thing. I didn't. I wasn't told that I was being punished until after. I didn't learn that I was being punished until after, and I was going to get bashed in the head with the chair until after. And it did damage, dude. I got a nice freaking dent in my head right here. Like if you run oh, yeah. your finger on my head from my skull, it's actually it's right here. I got a nice big indention in my skull from that. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's you know, and, and that dude's going on saying, "Oh, what did he think was going to happen? He knew it was going." All right. All right. But is that on Supreme or is that on or is that on well, Rob? Well, for me, for me, it's on Rob because Rob's the one who did it. Rob's the one who put it out there. Rob's the one who called it. He put Supreme in a bad spot. Uh, do I hold Supreme responsible? Yeah, of course I do because because uh, you know I I wouldn't do that to somebody. But but it was a different time back then. You got to think you had those locker room enforcers in every locker room you went to. You know, look at all. And I'm not going to throw anybody's name on the bus, but you can go look at any company and look at the guys that used to put them in there. And they'd be all, your job is to beat the fuck out of this guy tonight. Just go out there and beat his fucking ass back in black and blue. You know, it happened, right? So, um, it, like, Rob's the one who initiated that. Supreme apologized to me for it. Supreme told me he felt terrible for doing it, you know, and he he felt caught up in the crossfire because the boss is telling him he has to do this. But on the other hand, he's got somebody that he respects and he cares about, you know. And 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 back then, we didn't know about concussions and the damage it does long term or any of that stuff, right? We didn't know any about this stuff. Right? It was just being tough. Like you, if you couldn't be tough, you couldn't be there. You couldn't be anywhere. You know, look at WWE. Look at the chair shots they used to take there, right? Look how bad it was. Look at the mankind. I mean, everybody talks about the Rock mankind stuff. Though. Every, there, there's so many more. Look at the hardest. Look at the hardest with Brock Lesnar, and it just the, and it was it was just repetitive. And everywhere you looked in wrestling, that happened. ECW, right? Look at balls and axes, right? The way they used to swing the chair. Nobody knew. So um, 
you know, and 21 year old me, I'm 40 now, 21 year old me just thought I was being tough. Right. And, 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 and it's looking back on, let me tell you something. I'm just, just straightforward. I'm my own man. I feel like I'm tough. I'm, you know, I might be dumb, whatever. I, I, I think you take a freaking shotgun to kill me. But if I seen that happen to my kid, if I heard that something like that happened to my kid, or if I heard somebody put a hit out or did something, you know, purposely try to hurt somebody like that, hurt my kid or hurt one of my friends or hurt, guess what? All bets are off. All bets are off. We just went to a whole new level, right? Because we're not wrestling anymore. We're not wrestling anymore. We're taking it somewhere else. So then all the wrestling shit goes out the window. So that's how I feel about it now. You know, you know, uh, you you purposely took advantage of somebody that, you know, especially a young, hungry kid who loved pro wrestling and wanted to do anything he could to be a pro wrestler and put on the best show as possible. And we always had to out top and out top and out top to go to the next level. There's 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 no there's no sense for it. You know, and uh, in, in, and back then was a, a different time. And, and again, like if if Rob was to say now, it's too late now. It's too late now. But if he would have said, look, yeah, I did that. I apologize because I didn't realize the effects those things could have on people. You know, what I mean, the, the, yep. then that would have been a different story. But that's not the case. He's not running around saying like I'm a liar and that I knew what was going on and all that bullshit. You know, what what'd you think was gonna happen? Okay. All right. Hmm. So XPW Look like you said, you. Yeah. <laughs> uh XPW always just like was raising the bar, raising the bar. Do you think that they took it too far, the, the death match tournaments, all that other stuff? Well, I, 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 I can't blame XGW on that because because I think that uh, a lot of things get taken too far, right? Look at the stuff now. There's a bunch of things I follow on Instagram and Sony's sites I follow and I watch some of the stuff that people are doing and, and I just go, God damn, what? how stupid is that? You know? It, it, they just do these unnecessary, unsafe, it, it, it really is crazy that more people haven't died or broke their back or do, I mean, there's no way these people can have long-term careers. You know, I, I've been fortunate enough to be wrestling, you know, 22 years now, but I'm lucky, right? I'm lucky. Look at all the dumb stuff I did. Look at all the dumb, yeah, all the dumb things I did and all the crazy stuff I did. I'm lucky because I mean, I could have did it right and still broke my back. You know, I could have shattered my leg and, I'm lucky that I got to walk away and, and continue my career. And, uh, and, and that's just, that's, that's, that's being young. I think it's being young. A part of being young and being hungry. It's like when you, when you play football, right? You, when you play football, you know, Patrice O'Neill had a great skit about it. He said, uh, you know, when, 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 we, when we played football, we didn't, we, we didn't knock a player out and then go hold hands with the other team and pray that he got up. We, you know, we'd be like, Take a socks, you know, and be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the team that takes yep. motherfucking socks when they knock them out. We'd be chanting, he's paralyzed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. like, you know, that's what you get for playing with killers. So, uh, it's a, but that's how it was, man. It was just a diff different time back then. So I can't knock XPW for that. It's just what it was. I, I mean, that's what I signed up for, right? I signed up for XT, Extreme Pro Wrestling. If I was in ECW, I would have been doing stupid stuff too. You know, maybe not to that extent. You know, maybe not with with all things as as frequent as XPW did those things, those death matches and stuff. Because, that, you know, ECW wasn't all about death matches. ECW was wrestling and hardcore wrestling. You know, it had a different a different vibe to it where XPW was really known. I mean, let, let, correct me if I'm wrong, but in my mind, XPW's biggest title was the Deathmatch title. So that's what they were known for. Uh, you know, and I was the Deathmatch champion. You know, I, I'm I think I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm like a hundred, let's say ninety seven percent positive that I'm the only guy to be supreme. So it was a pretty big deal for that to happen. Um, and the deathmatch title was 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 the prestigious title back then. So and it was the most talked about title back then. So it's it's one of those things where I was that guy. That was me, you know. And uh, I didn't always like it. Like I didn't want to do it long because the reason I didn't want to do 
excuse me, the reason I didn't want to do it long is like when they threw that on me, I felt pressured to take that chance because, uh, and I've told the story many times, when they called me about it, I didn't want to do it because I never did anything like that. And, you know, Vic, Vic was pretty hot about it. He was pissed that they asked me to do it. We ended up doing it. And, but, but when he talked to me, he said, look, you can do it. You got the, you got the talent to do this. And but I said, well, I want to incorporate more wrestling into it. I don't want to just right. do Gaga stuff. You know what I mean? I don't want to just go get thrown in some light tubes. Like, I want to do wrestling. And Supreme, hats off to Supreme, he was all ears. Whatever you want to do, you call the match. Put it in. So I would call the matches and I put this in. And, you know, I say, hey, let's do this, this, and this. And let's build up this and let's do it. And he was all for it. So, you know, and I was young. So, like, I was, you know, I was only a couple of years in the business at that point. So he could, he was a veteran. He could have told me to screw off. You know, he could have told me, nah, kid, this is what we're doing. And he could have punched me in the face and sliced me and diced me. But he didn't do that. You know, he listened to my ideas. He let us take it to the next level. Things were good. But here was my problem was, you know, again, Rob didn't have no appreciation for it. So, like, the next show, I did that 450 off the balcony. That was my idea. I said, man, I bet you I could do a 450 off this balcony to the floor with the tables, not the crow's nest, not not the, not what Dreamer got uh, T-boned off of. I want to go a step further, take it to the floor because it's a bigger jump, and I want to do a 450 off there. And then they're like, oh, I don't remember who it was. might have been Rob. might have been, you know, Smiley or something. But he was like, yeah, let's let's add one. Let's, let's one up it. Let's put thumbtacks on the table. Let's pour a bucket of thumbtacks on the table. And I was like, But I did it, you know, and it was yeah. it was brutal. Uh, but here's here's where I knew I had to get away from it was, you know, Rob just didn't have any concern for human bodies. So the next show when when we did the scaffold match, Rob's like, yeah, do a shoot star off the scaffold, do the shooting star off the scaffold. It's like, come on, I'm not, I'm not doing a shooting star from fucking 15, 20 feet up. Are you crazy? Like I'm not. Yeah, how the hell you pull that off? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he says, oh, you can't do it. I said, no, it's not that I can't do it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. And then everywhere I go, like, like offers started to come in. Deathmatch, deathmatch, deathmatch. And I was like, bro, I'm not a deathmatch wrestler. I'm a high flyer. I wanted to, initially, I wanted to innovate the high flying game. I've seen guys like Ray Mysterio who are really cool, you know, and these, these, these young high flyers that were, like, doing cool things that never were done in the States before. And I was like, I can do that stuff. So I started being inventive and coming up with some of these moves. If you watch some of the stuff I did, it was really inventive. I had so many inventive moves that people tried to take back then. You know, like like my halo, my moon sauce from the outside in. And you see me do like that springboard twist and flip I did off of, uh, on Guido and Vic at, at the uh, at the very first show at the ECW arena that XPW did. You know, I did some crazy stuff. And I was just like, I would get these ideas in my head and I say, yeah, come up with this, I come up with this, I come up with that. And Vic was super inventive too. So me and Vic did go, oh, you know what you could do? Try this. And uh, we just start putting stuff together. And that's how it was, bro. And it was just like really inventive. And then, uh, and then, and, and I'll be honest, I'll tell you what made me change my style. Jack Evans. You know, I, Jack Evans and Teddy Hart came along. And Jack started doing like two front flips and all this other stuff and stuff I couldn't do. Six thirties, yeah, yeah. And I said, "Shit, I can't. I'm done. Like, how can I compete with that? You know, I couldn't. So I was like, I need to figure out what I need to do to take my stuff to the next level. And I didn't want to just be that guy anymore. I didn't want to be like the skinny high flyer because nobody was telling me like nobody was giving me pointers on what to do and how to you know improve and you know get." bigger bookings. I wanted to be the champ. I wanted to be the guy in the front poster. I wanted to be that guy in the middle of the fucking poster, you know, just, yeah. you know, the, the show. I wanted to be the show. So um, I started looking. I said, damn, well, I don't have muscles like this guy. I can't talk like this guy. I don't wrestle like this guy. So I had to start figuring out what I needed to change in, in my performances to, to, to go to the next level. And, uh, and just worked on it for many, many years, many, many years, still working on, it. you know, always trying to improve and always trying to get better and always trying to, you know, do the best job I can and be as, it, be as, as original as I can wrestling. It's funny. Like now you're huge back then. It's like, no, it's going to be the same <laughs> guy, right? Oh my God. No. It is the same guy. It's, hey, it's funny. I hear that. I hear that often. A lot of people are like, I didn't realize that was you. So. I could I could see that because it's like no that skinny ultra boy Luke that can't be Luke Hawks like yeah I can yeah. see that yeah definitely so a guy that we both know very well you may have had some heat with him back in the day XPW Extreme Rising Wildcat what about 
franchise Shane Douglas. You guys have some heat back in the day. Was that legit? That that was all legit. I mean, you know that it was all legit. Um, I'm, I'm really Shane was my favorite wrestler growing up uh, through my teenage years when I got first introduced to ECW. When I seen Shane Douglas, it was just like a light bulb went off and my jaw dropped. And I was like, oh, oh my God, this guy's awesome. Like just the way he was talking and the things he was saying. And then the matches, like he, he had such great psychology and he moved well and everything he did in the match meant something. So when I watched Shane wrestle, it really meant a lot. And then, um, you know, like, I, I was so excited to work with him in XPW, and we all know what happened there. We had the falling out, and that's where it all started. And, you know, we started getting heat. And, um, you know, they say don't meet your heroes because, you know, you'll just be disappointed. And uh, I had a big chip on my shoulder with Shane for many years. And, you know, and the same with Shane. Like, like we, we we went at it, and we had conversations, and he didn't see where I was coming from. And, you know, it, and just, it, was just, it, it was just one of those things where we wasn't meshing. Right. And 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 I, I for whatever reason wasn't and then me being a guy I am I, I am a mean, mean motherfucker. Like once you're on my bad side, I I will rip your ass tackle out. So and, and Shane knew like I, I wanted I wanted him. I wanted a piece of him. And um I'm I'm glad it never got to that because you know it was close to getting to that and, and if, if there weren't a lot of people around like to, to stop it, it would have gotten to that. And uh, I'm glad that it took a it took a while, but I'm glad that me and Shane were able to talk things out like adults and, and we fix things. And now I talk to him, you know, pretty regularly. We keep up with each other. And, you know, when we talk on the phone, we're going to talk for two or three hours and we're going to catch up on our lives and our families and, and, and what's going on and, and politics and everything. And Shane's just one of those guys that I really you know, I, I love listening to him and it feels so good to not have heat with somebody that you looked up to so much that, 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 you know, not, not just for me, but for him, because like, it's the same for him. Like, like he, he was, I'll tell you right now, the biggest thing I respect about Shane and, and this is personal, this is strictly personal. It's the biggest thing I respect about Shane is when, when me and Shane decided that we were going to bury the hatchet and we were going to work together, that, Neither one of us knew because he knew, you know, he knew that that I don't I don't give a fuck. Right. He knew that I'm that guy like like I. I'm going like like I, I'm going to fucking break your eyes out like they, he knew that. And, and I don't know what he's going to do, because I don't know if he was meaningful when we talked and, you know, if he was going to uphold his end and we were going to start from a clean slate. And so uh, but what, what happened was is is Shane was was overweight and when we started a feud and he was sending me progress stuff about how he was getting in shape and how he was taking this seriously and how he wanted it to be his he wanted it to be like he's like hey in reality i like this to be kind of like the last thing i do in wrestling because i think it's meaningful and blah 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 and i like he's just like i'm getting older and you know i don't i don't want to get in the ring as much you know what i mean so like he's like i really want to take this seriously so for me, bro, the dude got in shape. He dropped a bunch of weight. He, you know, he stayed, he updated me on things. And it was crazy because then that's when the, like the, the little boy in me started to come back. The teenage kids started to come back and go, man, I'm talking to one of my idols who's really taking your work ethic seriously. And he's trying to match your work ethic. And he wants to show you that he's serious about putting on something really good with you. And, uh, and we had all these ideas we would come up with and, you know, how we can make things better and really, 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 really meaningful, really amazing. So, yeah, I got a lot of respect for Shane. I love him. You got him on that keto diet. He was get, doing that and getting in shape and stuff. Yeah, working yeah. out every day. Yeah. Yep. So and uh, I got caught in, in the crosshairs because at the ECW <laughs> Arena, I made my uh, debut you at the ECW debut. Arena. Yes, sir. For, for there, oh, man, I was Shane's corner guy. I nailed you from behind, and you, you decked me. So I got caught in the middle between you two. Fun times, fun times. That was awesome, though. Quite a quite a memorable uh, night for sure, with uh, you and the franchise going toe to toe. Dog collar match, right? Yeah, it was dog collar. It was a dog yeah. collar match. Yeah, that was cool. That was a cool. It was a cool night, and we had a really good. We had a couple shows in New Orleans too, where we tore it up. 
Yeah, I was going to say, like, when you're building that feud, it's like the the ultimate, like, oh, I want to end it in New Orleans, like my hometown. We kind of were in his home base. Now we're going to go to my home base, like kind of thing. Right. Yeah, it was good, man. It was, uh, I wish we could have drew it out a little more, but it just, it, it, it really wasn't in cards for the way we run shows and stuff. It's like, you know, I can only do so much as an independent, right? That's a wildcat show, you know, and we're not, we're on TV here, but we're on TV nationwide. So it'd be nice if we could have took it around from town to town, the same way like me and Matt already did with our stuff. And kind of, because me and Matt took that a, a good, good amount of places. Yeah, definitely. So with wildcat, just explain a little bit of, like about it, how it started and everything is as far as wildcat. Well, Wildcat started in 2011. Uh, we started as a pro wrestling training center, which graduated into schools and stuff like, I mean, schools, graduated into live events because I needed a place for my wrestlers to work. Uh, I always wanted to run a wrestling school, but I didn't feel that. I was like, who wants to learn from an independent guy, right? I, I just kind of had this stigma where I seen a lot of guys running schools and training guys who I felt shouldn't be training guys. And I, I didn't right. want to be that guy. Uh, I really didn't want to be that guy. So I was like, man, people might look at me and go, who the hell is this guy? What's he doing? Where's he been? Oh, excuse me, man. I'm, I'm tired. Um, I, you know, they're like, I didn't want people to go, oh, he he's not a WWF guy. He's not a WWF guy. Why is he training guys? He never did anything. So I was like, eh, I was kind of hesitant about it for a while. But then I was like, man, I really know what I'm doing. And I've been around a lot and I've been around enough places and, and, and I really wanted to bring up the South territory again, because the South used to be such a hotbed for wrestling, but I wanted guys to be able to train because, you know, for me, I didn't have a place to train here. I had to go out of state, which was damn near impossible for me. I had to uproot my whole life to go chase my dream, right. And leave my kid and do all this other crazy stuff, which sucked, dude. It sucked. And all I thought about was, there's other people like me who could probably be just as good as me or be better than me if they had the right training and they had the place to do it at. And I was like, that's where Wildcat Sports came in. So I started Wildcat Sports and we, you know, it grew, you know, it grew and grew and grew. And, and, and uh, right now we're on a hiatus due to the Hurricane Ida, you know, at first dude, we, we, we came off our top show and we had like 2,400 people at, uh, and then, wow. and then the next, yeah, yeah it was huge. And then the, the immediate show right after that is we did a free show during Mardi Gras, not not Mardi Gras day, but during Mardi Gras time. We did a free show. Uh, we ran against some parades, and that was like a thank you to people who supported us for our, our major show, like our eight-year anniversary show. And that was a show my son jumped off the mall, and that that went yeah. super viral. So we already had this big hot show where we drew a couple thousand people at, and then the next show, my son goes super viral, and we're buzzing, we're buzzing, we're buzzing. Three weeks later, COVID hits. And shuts everything down. And then we're kind of stuck and we're just kind of riding it out, riding it out, riding it out. Then we start getting going again. We'll start, you know, COVID's kind of roller coaster and down, going downhill. People are starting to have live events, concerts are starting to happen. We run our first live event. A couple of weeks after our first live event, we we do, you know, we do decent at coming back. A couple of weeks after that, Hurricane Ida hits and puts us in the situation we're in now. So now our community is destroyed and we're just kind of taking it one day at a time, just trying to get, get the ball rolling back again. And then, you know, we will pick back up, but like, it's, I'm not trying to rush anything because I know our people are hurting. I know a lot of people don't have the financial means to, you know, some may, but there's a lot who don't. And, you know, and then here's the other thing, like we talked about earlier, inflation, the price of everything is through the roof right now, through the yeah, roof. So I, yep. I don't know if people can really afford to spend, you know, extra money to go, to a wrestling show and I can't keep tickets. My tickets have been rock bottom low prices for a while. I can't do it anymore. We got to go up on the price, which really disappoints me because I don't want to do that to our community. You know what I mean? I like to be as affordable as possible. And I think we'll still be affordable, but I can't lose money running the show. Right. You know, bottom line, like we can't, we just can't lose money running the show. We got to put on the show. We have to make a profit. So we got no choice. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, you can't lose money. You, you the, the whole point of the wrestling business is the business part. You got to make money. Yeah. Yeah. So as we wind it down, we'll head towards the finish here. What's next for you? What else? I know you mentioned it kind of briefly before, but what what else? What's next? What's going to be going um, on? 
Yeah, right now I'm just trying to. I got a couple. Like again, I told you I got a couple projects coming out. You know, I got the Delphi Hunger film coming out December third. Uh, right now, to be honest, I'm just the MCW things coming up, and then NWA tapings. But I'm just trying to chill out for the next like for the holidays, man. I want to chill home. I want to spend some time with my girl. I want to spend some time with my kids and just kind of relax for a little bit until the new. Because once the new year comes, I know I'll be full steam ahead. Going at it, you know, not sleeping, running around like a madman, working, working, working. So I just want to like, try and enjoy some family time and chill out a little bit and, and get, you know, pick up our community, and get things going here and then, you know, get Wildcat, you know, up and running again. So that's that's my main focus right now is just trying to build up around here, help out our community as much as possible and move forward with Wildcat. Where can everybody find Wildcat and you and all the social media and everything like that? So if you want to follow me directly, at Luke Hawks 504, L U K E H A W X 504 on all social media. Now, Wildcat, here's the thing about Wildcat. We put out a ton of free content on our YouTube show. So if you go to Wildcat Sports and Entertainment on YouTube, you'll, you'll see our official page. Follow our official page. We drop at least a match or two a week. We got a ton of previous stuff you can go check out all. I mean, I think last week we just dropped uh, Draw Lakes from MCW versus Brian Cage. You'll see a ton of footage on there, so we're always putting out. Uh, what I did was I, I took – I didn't have anything on YouTube for a while because we had our TV show and we had our Vimeo, but I was like, eh, I'm going to put it on YouTube. I want to stop doing the subscription stuff, and I wanted to start putting out. So what we did was we took all our television shows, and we broke it up, and we started dropping a match and match and match on YouTube just to build up our, our repertoire on there. So, you know, if you want to go to our YouTube page, please watch out all our stuff, and then uh, follow us on social media. Wildcat Sports and Entertainment on Facebook. That's Cat with a K, K A T, Wildcat Sports and Entertainment. And then everything on YouTube and tw- I mean, uh, Instagram and Twitter is at Wildcat Sports. Again, Cat with a K. Stuff. And you and your son be going to be teaming up uh, anywhere else any- coming up soon? NWA yeah, again? N- N- NWA stuff, yeah. NWA stuff. So we're in the NWA. Uh, we got a good in that tag tournament right now, which is going pretty well. We're in the semifinals of that. And, uh, you know, then we got the next set of tapings as well. MCW, I think, uh, I think so with Shamrock Cups the first night, which is Friday night, and then I think him and I are teaming the second night, uh, which isn't Shamrock Cup. It's a different town. I don't know. I don't know the uh, town second night. So. Off the top Very of my cool. head. That's awesome. You get the team with your son. I mean, it's like Dusty and Dustin. Remember back in the day in the Mysterios it's, now? I mean, pretty yeah, cool. It's, yeah, yeah. It's the greatest thing in the world, man. It's the greatest thing. And by the way, we were, uh, you know, the first full, full-time for all the Sun Tag Team, so. Yes. Yes. Good call. (laughs) Luke, thank you so much for all the time. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you, brother.